Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be talking about seven street photography compositions you should try that will definitely improve your photography. If this is the first time you've seen my face, my name is Mike and I do a lot of street photography. I just love it. Introduction over. I think that's pretty much all you need to know. But today I'm going to be showing you some interesting ways that you can compose your photos to make your photos better. That's what we all want to do here. We all want to improve with our photography skills. So hopefully you could take a tip or two from this video to help make your street photography that little bit more interesting. The first thing that will dramatically increase the quality of your street photography photos is by smashing that like button. It's as simple as that. If you click that like button, it gives you this like special power or something that just makes every photo you take a million times better. So I do apologize. That was, uh, that was a little bit cheesy, but please just hit that like button. It's really appreciated. Composition tip one is using the rule of thirds. I'm sure you've all heard this before, so I won't waffle on too much. I'll keep this one short. Lining up your street photography with the rule of thirds like this is pretty much the easiest way to ensure you get a strong composition. For some reason, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know why, the human eye is drawn to these points within a photo. And if that's true, why not line up your photo with this grid to get an appealing image? Like most rules though, this can be broken. I don't always compose my images with the rule of thirds, but it is a classic, so don't forget about it. Composition tip two, layering. This is where you have multiple layers to your photo in the same frame. You have your foreground, which is everything closest to the camera. You have your background, which is everything furthest away from the camera. And then you have everything in between that. Next time you're out doing street photography, try taking a photo with something in the background and the foreground that complement each other nicely. In this photo, for example, you can see a London bus and St. Paul's. Now, St. Paul's was initially my subject for the photo, but then I noticed buses and taxis moving past me on the street. And I thought maybe if I timed it right, a red bus could fit nicely in the foreground of my composition. And I like to think it did, and this shot came out quite nice. Composition tip number three, and that's all about cropping. Don't be afraid to crop. This is something I've personally started to do a lot more with my photos. What I mean by this is actually tightening the image so the viewers that are looking at the photo have to look at something more specifically. Here's a photo of the Gherkin in London. I want people to notice the texture in the photo, like I did when I saw the building in person. The edge of the building is distracting, the clouds look boring, so why keep them in the photo at all when I can just crop in and focus more on the details? I will just say with most of the composition tips that I'm saying here today, they don't apply to every single photo, so don't just assume that when you take a photo, you need to crop it in in all different angles. That's not always the case. But for a lot of architecture shots, I found recently in my own personal experience that I like to crop in and focus more on the details and the textures. Composition tip four, balance. This one's all about filling in the gaps. This is definitely one of the more simple composition tips in this video, but I find it's always useful to remember. For example, if you're waiting for someone to walk into your frame, there will be a better place for that person to be stood when you take the photo. And typically the photo looks better when the composition is more balanced. So an example on screen here is my friend Pete walking along the path in front of me. If I took the photo where Pete was just a little bit further on the right or left, then the photo would look more out of balance. But instead I took the photo when he was perfectly in between the two cars, just left of the center of the frame. Hopefully this makes sense, but you can see that Pete is nicely balanced within the image. Ways of balancing an image isn't just about waiting for people to walk into your frame, but maybe just finding an alternative angle, finding a new way of looking at something so it doesn't look so empty and boring. Composition tip number five, negative space. This tip might sound like I'm actually contradicting my previous point about balance. Having negative space in your photo is leaving a great big open empty area that kind of overwhelms the photo a little bit. I don't use negative space often, but when I do, it's normally for a good reason. Here's an example of a photo I took from a really foggy morning. So the most obvious reason for taking this photo is the dramatic fog. To emphasize how the fog was so moody and overpowering, I wanted to compose the photo with the fog taking up almost half of the entire image. Having all this negative space at the top of the frame just tells more of a story. You can really see how cold and how moody that fog really was. Using negative space can tell all sorts of different stories within your street photography, so use it wisely. And if you're not sure about whether the space should be empty or not, then balance out the frame with my previous composition tip. Composition tip six leading lines. This style of composition is very popular on Instagram. You've probably seen a lot of Instagram bangers with this style. Leading lines do exactly what they say on their tin. They are lines within a photo that lead your eyes into the subject. Leading lines are a popular one because of how easy they are to find. Almost every city and every street in every town will have some kind of leading line composition that you can find. Leading lines could be anything from lights or fencing or markings on a road or water or literally anything you can find in the streets. I'll throw some examples on screen so you can see what 
what I'm talking about. But leading lines is always a fun and easy composition. Composition tip seven, external framing. External framing is when you use everything else around you in the streets to frame your subject. Here's an example of the shard. Now, instead of just taking a boring photo of the shard, I've used this staircase and this railing around me to frame the image and draw the person's eyes towards the shard in the middle of the frame. Sometimes external framing can look a little bit chaotic and Try not to overdo this is my point here. But sometimes having something in the foreground of your photo can frame your subject nicely, whether you're taking a photo of a person or a building or light and shadow or color. Sometimes having something in the foreground that, you know, something external basically that frames your subject can look quite nice. Here's a recent example of how I used these two people in the street to frame this one person in Chinatown. I shot through these people over the shoulder at a low depth of field, so they're nice and blurry and not too distracting, and our eyes are drawn towards the focus subject, which is this woman looking right at the camera to create a nice, simple image. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my presets. Most of the photos I've shown you today have been edited with my presets. They're available at mikechudley.com. A link will be in the description. Leave a comment down below, share some of your favorite composition ideas and street photography stories in the comments and I'll get back to you. Let's have a conversation about it. And also, if you're still watching my face talk right now and you haven't hit that like button like we've already discussed, then please do the right thing. Click the like button. That's pretty much it from me. I'll see you very soon. Peace out.